This is Mike Swanson of uh, Wall Street Window. I haven't done a video now in about a week. Uh, in uh, July and August, I was trying to do it almost every single trading day. But I've been caught up in some other projects, and I'm going to be busy um, probably for the rest of this month. So I'll just be doing them off and on. We saw the stock market have a sizable rally on Monday and Tuesday. Brought a lot of renewed excitement in the market. I didn't really do an up. I didn't do an update, uh, but I did get a lot of emails about it. Uh, but to give you my quick opinion is I don't think anything has changed at all. I know a lot of stock market gurus on Monday and Tuesday were saying that's the bottom or the start of a giant rally. They would cite various back tests, some of them. For example, I saw people on Twitter saying, well, we had two 90% uh, up days in the New York Stock Exchange. Someone said we had three in a row, and the last time that happened was 2020. Well, 2020 was not a good time to be buying and investing in stocks. That was, you know, the, the first year of a bear market that didn't end in 2003. So, um, what I see happening is people want to believe that this market, uh, the bear market's going to end. Bear markets are not fun. They're very difficult to make money in. Everyone wants to buy stocks. And they're looking for signs that it's over, but they're grasping at straws. Um, now, the other thing is, is the narrative that the Fed's going to pivot. The Fed's going to pivot because uh, you can point to some bad or, or uh, disappointing uh, economic data from time to time. And they'll say, oh, the Fed... You know, they're not, they're going to not want a recession. And uh, let me show you a story about, about this uh, right here. This is from Tuesday, headline of a Reuters story uh, right there, saying that everyone is hopeful for that Fed pivot. And that's what justified the rally. I would suggest to you that the stock market fell almost every single day. Uh, in, in September, and at the end of August, it was tumbling, and uh, a, a bounce of some sorts was inevitable, and it happened uh, Monday and Tuesday, and uh, people go out on television and say the Fed's pivoting to explain the bounce. They want the viewers want a reason. They give the people a reason. People writing about it, you know, want to have all these explanations. That's one reason I really haven't had much to say because. I think it's a lot of nonsense. It's just an oversold bounce, and there it is. And it's really not much to say about it other than that, because this whole talk of a ped pivot is an absolute and total hoax. You heard people talk about that in May, in June, in July, and the market was going up in July and August, and that was the theme. But it wasn't real, and you know the Fed did not pivot, and uh, but they were doing this trying to encourage people to buy a reason to believe. But I did videos explaining why they're wrong and they're wrong now. And I'll show you why. Right here is the CME uh, Fed Fund Futures. And I looked at all the contracts. There's no um, rate cut coming. Uh, what they're saying is a 72% chance of a 50 rate point hike at the next meeting in November. And when I will go and look to see when are the hikes going to end, uh, by February, they're looking at interest rates at up to 475 uh, in March. Uh, possibly up to five. So we're looking at February and March now as the end point of rates going up to 475 or five, exactly the same as it was a week ago before all these people were saying, pivot, 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 stop listening to those people. They are just going to mislead you in this market. And if you look at the daily gyrations, you, it's easy to get caught up uh, thinking things are changing uh, when they're not. Look at this chart here. This is the S&P 500 for the last 12 months. Uh, you can see the bounce well, the, earlier this week. Well, on the chart, that bounce is, that, is meaningless. You know, it, it really didn't bounce that much at all. Um, so what? 
Uh, it's not to say it can't go up a little higher. It could go to 3,900. It could go to 4,000. Um, that's where the 50 day moving average is, but it would take a heck of a move from here for that to happen. Uh, frankly, my guess is the market's not going to really do much one way or the other over the next couple of weeks. We got the start of earnings season uh, in October. I'm, I'm basically looking for the market to chop around. Yeah, there'll be some earnings reports that beat purposely lowered analyst ex estimates. The stocks will gap up. That could help the average gap up. There's going to be companies that disappoint or have to report that the earnings outlook is 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 downbeat or getting worse because of what's going on in the economy. In other words, a mishmash cross currents and don't look for the market to do much at all. In the end, we saw the market slide from 4,300 to 3,600. That's a pretty good drop. And after a slide in the markets, it's likely to go into a range um, for a couple of weeks. Uh, and that's what it looks like. The 3,600, the bottom of the range, this 3,800, uh, the <clears throat> high short-term high could be the top of the range. If it's not, then you're, we're looking at 3,900 or 4,000, but that's going to take a, a continuation rally in earnings. If that happens, then you're going into November and the rally has lost steam and you're heading into the next Fed meeting. In other words, when you, the intermediate term picture of this market, nothing has changed. I'm not buying stocks as investments. I'm not really doing much of anything, but remaining patient. You want to day trade it, go at it. You, you know, I, I, but I'm not going to do videos advocating that because um, if I were to buy right now, I can't predict, you know, what it's going to do tomorrow. Um, now, as far as something positive, oh, let me show you the bonds too. When all these people are telling you Fed pivot, Fed pivot, uh, bonds did not rally. So they did not confirm all the talk. Here's the TLT ETF. Trades opposite to the 20 year treasury bond. Uh, it fell. LQD ETF, yeah, it bounced, but it's not much of a bounce, doesn't really mean anything. And it bounced after making a new 52 week low last week on one of the biggest down volume days in the history of ETF. Oversold bounces happen in bear markets. And what's important is to understand what a bear market is. A bear market is a market trading below the 200-day moving average in which that moving average acts as resistance. And that's what's been going on all year. We rallied up to that point in August and touched it, but the S&P 500 could not even close above it. As you can see right here, it stalled out. We remain below it. The day will come in which the red market will rally above that indicator and it will be support, but that day is in the distant future. It's not going to be this year, probably... You know, it's just not going to be this year. It's not going to happen. Maybe it happens uh, next year. Uh, I've talked about what I think the bear market will end before in my in, pa in previous videos and stuff I've written. In my opinion, has not changed one bit. That's why I haven't had much to say because my opinions have not changed one bit despite the two-day bounce earlier this week and the possibility that the you know maybe the bounce will continue a little bit. I don't care. My opinion has not changed. Now let me show you where there has been a little bit more positive action in the market, and that is in gold. Uh, what we're looking at here is the GLD gold ETF divided by the S&P 500. It's a relative strength ratio. It goes up when gold is outperforming the S&P 500. Gold has been doing that uh, since August, even though gold has fallen with the market. And that's positive because the things that outperform the market uh, on a market decline, eventually become the leaders of the next bull market, or they can even break away from the bear market action. I think that this is a sign that that's going to happen with gold. Um, I, I don't think it's happening now, but in the next couple months, I think it's a very good chance it does happen. And we look at the price of gold, you know, it bounced harder than the stock market. Mining stocks went up harder than the stock market on the recent bounce. And I don't think this is probably going to go anywhere in the short term, but it's a positive development. It builds um, the, um, uh, what's the way to put it? It, it, it? It's providing fuel for a breakaway run, uh, but it's going to take more time, fuel, so to speak, for that breakaway run to happen. But we can see 
fuel being entered into gold with the relative strength comparison to the stock market. So that's positive. It's good. It's important to know that because it gives us the chance to be able to get in something that does better than the stock market can break away from the stock market. But I don't think that time is yet. Uh, so I'm watching it uh, very closely. I still own gold, by the way. Um, so, but I'll be buying a lot more uh, when I think the time is right. So that's all I wanted to talk with you today. Just to repeat, my overall opinions have not changed one bit from where they were a week ago. Uh, so I may not have much to say as frequently for the next couple of weeks. And uh, if you like this video, if you want more frequent videos, hit the like. And if you want to get my next video, make sure you hit the subscribe button, hit the bell next to it, and YouTube will send you an alert as soon as it's up and for you to watch.